Hey everyone, welcome back to 5 tips and tricks on Rodney part 3. So let's quickly start with tip number 1, P scale. So I have this simple scene, so where I want to... So I want to scale down these boxes which is near to camera. So let me explain this scene. I have scattered some points, P scale, and I am just copied to points. So how we can do that? So for that, we need camera space information. And so here I will use wrangle. And let's create vector and need camera space and here i will use two ndc function and what this function does so let's just so it transform a position to normal device coordinates for camera and what does it mean so let's just find out i need camera path and point position so for that i'll use channel soft and i will use point position over here Cool. let me select our camera over here so let's visualize as you can see here I am getting some colorful information and if you see here vector information it has XYZ information and what I am interested in using here is Z axis just let me show you and now you can see here I have some information it's currently showing me wrong so I will just invert this using minus and now I have that information from 0 to 1 so how we can use this so to use this we will use fit function let me create test and i will use fit minus camera dot z zero and i want to control distance near camera and default let's visualize this test let's create channels so i think it's not updated updating in the viewport so let me just use a new scene it's minus it's still using minus that yeah so now it's working so now you can see here that it's working now so how do you apply this information to p scale so for that i will use p scale and i will multiply with that value so whichever p scale is coming from here i'll just multiply it and my default value is 0 and my near camera is 1 so when I copy stamp here and I don't want color anymore so let me just bypass it and I want black background let's visualize so now near camera I will just scale it down and I have distance to control right so this is quick and fast way to run this and now you can you have noticed that behind camera also it's scattering so i can use this information to delete behind camera particles so let's see how we can do that for that i will use if minus camera dot z is less than zero remove point right so we can optimize that as well over here let's move to tip number two trigger frames and let me just show you this scene so i have this scene over here it's emitting particle per frame so here i want to trigger impulse activation at certain frame let's just activate let's go over here one zero and so let's just visualize this and yeah so it's easy to do this way but so there is quick way also so here we can use trigger frames to do that so it's easy and simple just we will use dollar f equals equals 10th so on 10th frame it will get active right and there are lots of advantage of this just you can just quickly move this around and if you are creating otl you can link your trigger frame over here using relative references and there are lots of other trigger frames as well so you can use dollar f greater than 10 so it will get active after 10th frame and if you use less than it will get active before 10th right and if you want to active this every 10th or 5th frame so you can use this dollar f modulus 5 equals equals zero so what it will do it will get active on every fifth frame and 
so let's just run this and yeah it's cool it's getting activated on every fifth frame and so what if i want to increment every 10th frame so for that so we'll use pop force and i want to increment every 10th frame so for that i will use cell dollar f and 10th so let's run this now and you can see here every 10 every 10th frame it, it will increment this one more thing i just wanted to show you that what if you want to run this in a loop so for that i will use dollar f modulus 10 so what it will do when i run this it will reset after 10th frame and next is my all-time favorite hotkeys and i have shown this many times in my tutorials but let me just show you over here and to create hotkeys i will use shell and it's easy to create so let me just rename this as so i will create hotkeys for those nodes which i use mostly like merge null object merge or something for this example let's select merge and here also i have top tops and here i will just specifically i have to select swap merge create apply and right click on this edit tool and if i go to hotkeys tab so i will select network and let's just edit and double click over here and press m apply select so when i so when i press m i will get merge and next step is attribute copy and let me just show you how we can use attribute copy and i have this animated character so here i want to select this area like on moving geometry so for that what i will do i will just freeze this i will create a group let's use a sphere select this area press t so we will get pivot point and here i want to increase this every frame so let me just copy paste and paste so just let's just run this so it's working but it's too slow let's use till 80 Hmm. I think I want to cover this much so I think 24 works great right so let me just color this it's not updating so let's just use new scene yeah now it's updating yeah cool it's working now i need dark background how do i transfer this on moving geometry so for that we can use copy tool. so how it works it works on primitive and points so so it has matching primitives and points you can use attributes also to match like name or something and now you can see here on moving geometry also it will work if you're creating disintegration effect or something you can use that in case and and one more note i wanted to show you that you can use group copy as well it's similar like that Right, so if i use so it will use it will do the similar effect so what's advantage of this so just so in case if if you want to select any specific geometry so in that case you can use this for example let me use rest position and i don't want i don't have to freeze this anymore and if i use this so if i want to select any specific area like this so so here i want to select this area right and i can transfer that area here right so generally 
the quick approach is this so if i want to select any specific here i'll just go over here and select this way right so but this can get you in trouble sometimes why if we change anything in object or something so let me just modify something over here like i want to delete this area right so here also i'll just copy this so this thing will get affected but here if you have t pose of that character it will again select that area you can see here let me just disable this that manual node we have created right so here if you have if you use t pose of any geometry then it won't get affect so you can you can just move this around so if anything gets changed or something it won't affect our selection while creating procedural setup or something i often use this technique in case i want to use specific geometry or you can just use custom shapes also over here right and the last tip is practice primitive and let me just show you how we can use that for quick visualization for I have this geometry over here so let me just subdivide this so let, let me just catch this everyone yeah, load phone risk and cache it right so I had this geometry So this can be anything like spaceship or heavy geometry like car or something and you can see here when i scrub through timeline or if i want to play for real time i'm facing like it's taking time and i just want to specific information for this like how much time it's taking for per frame and for that i can use this performance monitor and this is very useful in most cases and i'll just show where you can use this and in this example i'll just go to 10th frame and if i create if i click on record so when i go to next frame it will record some information so let me just stop this so it's taking total 0.7 seconds per frame and let me just test one more time right so it's taking somewhere around 0.7 per second and you can see here it's a really small object but in the large scale simulation it takes like lots of time to load and how we can optimize this to quickly scrub this timeline and for that we can use this technique pack this primitive and to get rid of this red color so you can just reset this and here i will just go over here and i will click on pack this primitive it will show something like box so it's loading as a box right now pack this primitive right so let's just change display settings to full geometry right so now let's again go back to 10th frame and check our performance monitor right so now it the time is reduced but slightly let's re let's check one more time right so it's taking like 0.1 second lesser now and we can optimize this even more so now if i run this it's faster than before but i want to make more faster for that i can use this cache so what it will do it will so it will cache this at shop level so for that we have to just run this one time it will catch every frame right so now you can see here it's faster but let's just compare with our previous result let's record now it's taking 0.3 seconds per frame which is very lesser it's more than like 50% to 60% and let's test this one more time right and make sure you use you cast you use this cache on practice primitive only in in case of like heavy geometry it will consume lots of data at scene level right so and you can use this performance monitor in many cases like so if you are running like 
you're going through like complex node flow or something and you can go to last last node and you can just check which node is taking more time to run here you can just select that node and you can just cache that to save lots of time but make sure you it's worth caching that node it, if it's taking like more than two to three minutes per frame then you can in that case you can just cache that node right so hope you like all these tips and tricks and 